So following on from the previous video, we got to this stage here. We got to um, we got to, uh, to to this stage here. Now we need to look at this bit here. So what that means is we are currently at this stage. Hang on. We are currently at this stage. So we need to analyze. We need to analyze this block here. Okay. So we need to analyze that block. So we need to um, we need to analyze this block here. So now, now if you look at our function, remember our function starts with sine of x. If you differentiate it, it will be cos of x. Differentiate it, it will be negative sine of x. Differentiate it, it will be blah blah blah. Differentiate it again, that will then take you back to sine. Differentiate it again. So, so f of n will be will be whatever f f of n plus. The the point here is that this we we want to differentiate it to. Um, to uh, 2n plus 1. But the thing is, is um, the, the whole value here itself will be between, well, sine of x looks like sine of x is always trapped in between uh, 1 and, and negative 1. Cos of x will always be trapped in between uh, positive 1 and negative 1. Even if you have a minus sine minus cos, it will always be trapped in between 1 and negative 1. So this block here this block here will always be trapped in between negative 1 and 1. It's always trapped in between the two. No matter how many times you differentiate it, um, the, the whole value here will always be between negative 1 and 1. So what that means is, this thing here, which we try, this is our remainder here, well, this block here is always trapped in between um, negative 1 and 1. So, so you can be sure that, um, well, the biggest value that this thing here could be is 1. So it's got to be less than or equal to to uh, to this thing here. So that will then take us to uh, to here. Well, the modulus of this whole thing here, remember, n, n is, um, n is, hang on, sine x, and then, and then n is like, um, n is all these terms here. n is always positive, basically. Your, uh, your first term, second term, and so on. n is always positive. And then n heads towards infinity. N is always positive. Um, it is only this x that we need to think about. It could be negative. So this, so taking the modulus of the whole thing is the same as you just concentrate on taking the modulus of uh, of x. So from here, that will then take you to here. Okay. So so uh, so now now th this is a thing that we don't know, we know nothing about. We are trying to investigate. But, uh, but now take the limit of everything. The limit of 0 will be 0. Take the limit uh, as n tends to infinity. Take the limit of n tends to infinity. Well, if you take the limit of, well, this block here will, will, will tend to, uh, will, will tend to 0. The limit of this whole block here equals 0. Um, because this, if you look at this, this is exactly the same as this. So you can imagine, in a way, you can imagine this as being very similar to this. And remember, you should already know this. Um, uh, yeah, you should, whenever you see this, think of, put, put something simple in this x here. Let's put a number 5. 5 to the power of n is like 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 and so on. Um, and then when n is uh, uh, n factorial, don't forget n is going to be very, very big. So let, let me work backwards. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Uh, this thing here is 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. As you head towards, as you head towards infinity, the denominator will, will be so much bigger than, than the numerator, because the numerator is always 5, 5, 5, 5. You see, from, from this point onwards, the, everything here will be much bigger than the numerator. Well, you should already know this. The limit of this here equals 0. So the limit of this thing equals 0. Now you might feel uneasy with, with this absolute here. So if you if you if you don't feel comfortable here, then uh, then then just imagine. Let, let's put the absolute in here. Then imagine you putting a negative number in here. Negative five times negative five times negative five, uh, and so on. And then the numerator is going to be one, two, three, four, five. Um, it, it, the, the, the point here is that the, the denominator will be so much bigger than the numerator. Yes, it could be it could be negative, um, but then but then you're taking the modulus here. Well, regardless of what happens, this um, the limit of this here will head towards zero.
the limit of this heads towards zero. So, uh, so this thing here, which is our remainder, we know nothing about our remainder, but we know that it's trapped in between zero and zero. So as n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity, our remainder will be zero. So what that means is this. What that means is as n as n tends to infinity, it means that as you keep on adding all these terms all the way to infinity, the remainder, this block here, the remainder here, will head towards will head towards zero, meaning the whole series, as you head towards infinity, will be equal to exactly sine of x, because the remainder heads towards zero.